Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 42 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of direct proportion. So we're going to look at dealing with questions where something is directly proportional to something else. So I'm going to go through some examples, and there'll be some questions for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and to try those questions. If you've got the Quote Maths Revision cards, card number 62 is the card in direct proportion, so it's going to be a really useful one for you. So again, remember to use this revision card when you're on the bus, in the car going to school, or stick it up on your wall at home, and then you'll know where to find it. So it's a very useful revision card for you. In this video, we're going to look at direct proportion, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at direct proportion. So today we're going to look at direct proportion, and tomorrow we're going to look at inverse proportion. So let's start off by looking at a direct proportion question. So in this video, I'm going to go for a few direct proportion questions. If you want to have a go at them yourself, feel free to press pause and try the questions yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go through the first one, and then after that one, you may want to try some yourself anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So this is part of the Corp Miles revision card. So if you've got the revision card, you can get that revision card in front of you and see this example done for you. You. Otherwise, let's go for it. So you get C is directly proportional to the square of D. So let's write that down. We're going to write C is directly proportional. So let's use the proportional symbol. So it looks like that. Uh, some of my students call it fishy, uh, but it's a proportion symbol. So C is proportional to the square of D. So that's D squared, D squared. So we read this as C is proportional to D squared, or C is directly proportional to D squared. Okay, now we're told some information. We're told whenever C is equal to 200, D is equal to 2. And we've been asked to find C whenever D is equal to 5. So whenever we're dealing with a proportion question, we want to get rid of this proportion symbol, and we're going to put in the constant of proportionality, and that's K. So we're going to write C. So instead of this proportion symbol, we're going to write equals, and then we've K multiplied by D squared. You could write C is equal to K D squared. I tend to put the multiplication symbol in. It's just something that I do. So we've got C is equal to K multiplied by D squared. So in other words, we've got rid of the proportion symbol and we've done k the constant proportionality multiplied by d squared so we've got c is equal to k multiplied by d squared now we're told some information we're told that whenever c is equal to 200 d is equal to 2 so we can substitute these values in and we can find the value for k and then once we know that then we know the formula that links c and d so let's substitute those values in so c which is 200 200 is equal to k multiplied by d squared now d is equal to 2 so it's going to be 2 squared so 2 squared is equal to 4, so we get 200 is equal to k multiplied by 4. And if we divide both sides by 4, we get k is equal to 50, so k is equal to 50. So we can substitute k is equal to 50 into here. So we get c is equal to 50 multiplied by d squared, just replacing the k with 50. Or I suppose we could write it as c equals 50 d squared. And that's our formula that links c and d. So c is equal to 50 multiplied by d squared. Now, I've been asked to find C whenever D is equal to 5, so if we substitute 5 into this, we can then find the value for C. So let's do that. Whenever D is equal to 5, we're going to get C is equal to 50 multiplied by D squared, which would be 5 squared. Now, remember our order of operations. We have to square before we multiply. Even think of pi r squared. We square the radius before we multiply by pi. So we're going to square the 5 first of all. That's 25. So we get C is equal to 50 multiplied by 25. And then if we do 50 multiplied by 25, we'll find what C is. So that's equal to 1,250. So we find what C is. Whenever D is equal to 5, C is equal to 1,250. And that's it. So just to recap in this question, we we're given that C was directly proportional to D squared. So we wrote that down. C is proportional to D squared. We got rid of the proportion symbol and put in K, the constant of proportionality. So we've done C is equal to K multiplied by D squared. We then used a pair of information we were given in the question. So we used the fact that C was equal to 200 and D is equal to 2. So we find out that K is equal to 50. So that gave us our key formula, the equation of formula that links c and d c is equal to 50 multiplied by d squared and then we could use this to then find c whenever d is equal to 5 and that's it and if you got that well done okay let's have a look at our next question okay let's have a look at our next question so we've got a is directly proportional to the cube of b so this time instead of being the square of b we've got the cube of b and we're told that whenever b is equal to 2 a is equal to 32 and we've been asked to express a in terms of b in other words you want to get a equals and then something in terms of b so you want to make a the subject here okay so what i want you to do is i want you to press pause and I want you to try this question yourself. Okay, so let's start off by writing down what we've been given. We're told that A is directly proportional to the cube of B. So A is proportional to the cube of B, the cube of B. So A is proportional to B cubed. We're now going to get rid of the proportion symbol and we're going to put in K. So A is equal to K multiplied by B cubed. And we're told some information. We're told that whenever B is equal to 2, A is equal to 32. So we can substitute those values in and get K. So A is 32. So we get 32 is equal to K multiplied by, and instead of B cubed, it's going to be 2 cubed, 2 cubed. 
2 cubed is 8, so we get 32 is equal to k multiplied by 8. And if we divide both sides by 8, we're going to get that k is equal to 4. So if now I've got the k is equal to 4, we can put that back in here, and we can then get our equation linking, or get our formula linking a and b. So instead of a is equal to k multiplied by b cubed, we're going to write a is equal to 4 b cubed, just replacing the k with 4. And that's it. We're actually finished. It says express A in terms of B. So A is equal to 4B cubed. And that's it. We've expressed A in terms of B. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so we've got the same information to begin with. So we've got that same information. And this time we've been asked to find A whenever B is equal to 4. So if we go back, we've got A is equal to 4B cubed. So let's write that down. A is equal to 4B cubed. So quite often these proportion questions, you've got like a part A, such as express A in terms of B. And then part B might be find A whenever B is equal to 4 and something like that. So this is the key formula that links A and B. A is equal to 4B cubed. And we've been asked to find A whenever B is equal to 4. So feel free to press pause now and work that out. Okay, so we're going to replace b with 4, so we're going to get that a is equal to 4 multiplied by b cubed, so b is equal to 4, so it'll be 4 cubed. Okay, now we're going to do 4 multiplied by 4 cubed, well 4 cubed is equal to 64, so we're going to get that a is equal to 4 multiplied by 64, and whenever we do 64 multiplied by 4, that's equal to 256, 256, so a is equal to 256, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. Okay, so again, we've got that same information to begin with. So it could be part A is express A in terms of B. Part B could have been find A whenever B is equal to 4. This time we've been asked to find B whenever A is equal to 4,000. So let's write our formula down again that A is equal to 4B cubed. That's the key formula in this question that we've found. So we want to find B whenever A is equal to 4,000. So feel free to press pause now and work out B whenever A is equal to 4,000. Okay, so if we do that, let's replace the a with 4,000. So we're going to get that 4,000 is equal to 4b cubed. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 4. So we're going to get that 1,000 equals b cubed. And now let's actually spin that around. We're going to get that b cubed is equal to 1,000. And now to find b, we're just going to work out the cube root of 1,000. So the cube root of 1,000 is equal to 10, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So that means that b is equal to 10. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Now, sometimes you might see a little table whenever you're doing proportion questions. So here we've got a table that shows the values for x and y. So whenever x is equal to 25, y is equal to 9. And then here we've got y is equal to 36, and we need to find x. So feel free to press pause and try this question yourself. And we're told that y is directly proportional to the square root of x. So y is directly proportional to the square root of x. I'm just going to write that down. That's what that says. y is directly proportional to, to the square root of x. So that's that. Okay. And we've got our table and we've been asked to complete our table. So we need to find this value here. This is what we need to find. Okay. So let's get rid of the proportional symbol. So we've got y is equal to k multiplied by the square root of x. Just replacing the proportional symbol with the k, the constant of proportionality, the number we want to find. And we are told a pair of information we're told that whenever x is equal to 25 y is equal to 9 so let's replace both the y and the x with the 9 and the 25 so y that's 9 is equal to k multiplied by the square root of x so it's going to be the square root of 25 the square root of 25 is 5 so we've got 9 is equal to k multiplied by 5 and then if we divide both sides by 5 9 divided by 5 is equal to 1.8 so we get that k is equal to 1.8 so we can now replace the k in our formula with 1.8 so we're going to get that y is equal to 1.8 multiplied by the square root of x so we've got the y is equal to 1.8 multiplied by the square root of x so i'm just going to write that down i'm actually just going to so I'm actually just going to put a box around that because that's very important. And the question says to complete our table. So we want to find x here. We want to find this value of x. So we know that y is equal to 1.8 times the square root of x. So let's replace the y with 36. So we're going to get that 36 is equal to 1.8 multiplied by the square root of x. Now we want to get rid of this 1.8. So let's divide both sides of the equation by 1.8 and divide by 1.8. So if we divide 36 by 1.8, that's equal to 20. So we get that 20 is equal to the square root of x. So we've got the 20 is equal to the square root of x. Well, that means that x must be equal to 400 because the square root of 400 is equal to 20. So that means that x is equal to 400. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've got the cost of a circular table is directly proportional to the square of its radius. And we're told that whenever a table's got a radius of 40 centimetres, it costs £280. And we've been asked to find the cost of the table with a radius of 60 centimetres. So feel free to press pause now and to work out this question. So this one's in a bit of a context. And sometimes with direct proportion questions, they might be in a context. That's why it's very important, I think, to try the practice questions today. So have a go at doing this question now. So press pause and try this question.
So let's start off with this first sentence. The cost of a circular table, so the cost, is directly proportional. So it's proportional to the square of its radius. So we get that C, the cost, is proportional to the radius squared. And now let's replace the proportion symbol with our C is equal to K multiplied by R squared. So let's replace those in our formula. So instead of the cost, we're going to, so instead of C, we're going to write 280 is equal to K multiplied by the radius, which is 40 squared. So now let's work out 40 squared. So 280 is equal to K multiplied by 1,600. And if we divide both sides by 1,600, 280 divided by 1,600 is equal to 0.175 is equal to K. So we've got the value for K. K is equal to 0.175. So let's replace that in our formula. So we're going to get that C, the cost, is equal to 0.175 multiplied by the radius squared. Or I suppose I could have just written R squared, but I've written multiplied by the radius squared. doesn't really matter. And the question says, right, what is the cost of the table if the radius is 60 centimetres? So we just need to replace the radius with 60. So the cost would be equal to 0.175 multiplied by 60, the radius squared because r squared so let's work this out so we're going to do 60 squared multiplied by 0.175 and we get that the cost would be equal to 630 pound and that's it and if you got that well done and that's it so in this video we've gone through direct proportion we've looked at how to solve questions where something is directly proportional to something else tomorrow we're going to go through inverse proportion so that's going to be quite useful it says one value increases the other one decreases and we'll look at how to solve questions like those um, with the practice questions today, now the practice questions for direct proportion are very, 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 very important because the situations can change quite a bit and just trying lots of questions to get used to some of the situations that you might encounter. But with direct proportion, the practice questions I've got are a mixture of direct and inverse proportion. So what I'd highly recommend is that yes, you do the practice questions tomorrow. So tomorrow after the inverse proportion video, you try the practice questions and then you're ready to do the questions that you've covered today, the directly proportional and tomorrow's questions are inversely proportional. So today, don't do the practice questions, but have a look at the five days. And so remember the foundation plus five days, the higher five days, and the higher plus five days, they'll be really useful for you as well. But keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. Tomorrow there'll be 41 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. So remember to tune into YouTube at three o'clock, the next video will be out there. Cheers, bye.